go. It's Guido coming after the tactics talk and the uh, the further adventures of trying to catch up with some of the uh, with some of the content that I've had sent him. This is Nacho Tank, so this is a new submitter. Sent me four replays. I've got two of them for him today. In the Udes 14.5, he's got a I think a loss and a win is what I've chosen here. The first one we've got is on Himmel's Lake Town Dorf. Spawned into the north side. Get a little plus action right there. Spawned into the north side, and we have an encounter battle. We are bottom tier, but it's only two tiers, and we're we're playing the Udes 14.5. Now, I will say this, Nacho, before we get started into the, the rest of it, that this is not an easy tank to do well in. It's not a particularly good tank. It's a pretty good tank for, for the more passive, careful player. But overall, as a medium, it, it's it's... It really does lean towards more TD kind of game style and support medium vice a very dynamic medium. We're running a IRM, we've got a rammer, and we have a vert stab in there. I don't know if you have your field mods done. We're running a rammer directive, and we've got large kits and fire extinguisher. We have seven APCR. I would probably increase that a bit. What I don't know though, Nacho, is if you're free to play that may have something to do with your calculations in there. Now, taking a quick look at your stats, sitting at 49.69, so definitely right there solidly in the average area, which is good, 28,000 battles. But I will say that your damage and destruction ratio is quite low at 0.72 and 0.89. Uh, interesting that your win rate is that high, so we're going to take a look at that. You're obviously doing something good to win, and that's good, but I would say your damage, your damage doing is low. Uh, your average damage cause is 49, and your average assistant is 242. Uh, what's interesting about your graphs on your on your record here is that you play a lot more tier six. So I'm, I'm starting. To, I'm thinking maybe you're either free to play or you're just you're more comfortable at the lower levels. Usually, what I see is tier eight is the top for nearly everybody, and then the the curve goes down there. But your curve is t at eight or six. Sorry. And heads downhill from there, so kind of kind of an interesting curve, a little bit different than I usually see. All right. That being said, we need to increase damage and stop taking as much damage, and those are the two big things that I see right there. And I did not look at potentially your battle survive. Yeah, your battle survive is extremely low at twenty percent. That's another thing we really need to work on. And it looks like we. All right. So we must have been. We must have been finishing off the coffee right there. All right. It's a one-off, but moving late out of, out of cap, depending on what you're trying to do out of spawn, depending on what you can do, can actually hurt you. Don't, I won't take too much from a single game, but I'll just throw that out as a general observation. That's for everybody. Taking a long time to get out of spawn, depending on where you're trying to go and what you want to do and what tank you're driving, can actually have a, a very negative impact on your game. So just pay attention to that, you know, sometimes you just can't start when the game starts. That happens. I'll just chuck that out as a general observation. So we kind of cruise through here and we're headed into the middle, knocking trees down. And I guess we're maybe trying to cover the middle. Okay. So we're sitting in this bush. Looks like maybe we know this bush. We are friends with this bush. We are very familiar with it. Then we move forward. And all right. I don't like this spot, I'll tell you why. Because if something sneaky gets right there, they are going to see you and you are not going to see it. Not much really sneaky, which is the good news. And if you had that in your brain, then good on you. Unlikely that the EBR, what do we have? We have a 49 and they have an EBR. That's very interesting. Their EBR has not been seen that I can tell. Just as a general rule though, I would not be this low on this road because look at your the spotting rings. Anything moving around in there. Say they get a light tank there. Granted, there's not one this time. But as a general rule, I don't like going here because you're going to get hit. Where do I go? I go much higher up there where the Skoda is. So we'll see what you do here. Okay, we find somebody. He's going to be like, Guido, I, I hit somebody. Very good. Uh, don't auto-aim. Not on that shot. I would not auto-aim on that shot. That being said, I don't know what your particular physical situation, all that kind of stuff goes as far as, you know, eyesight and ability to manipulate the game so if, if auto aim helps you then by all means continue to use it the only reason i say don't use auto aim right there is the only reason i don't say the only reason i say don't use auto aim right there is as you saw once it's center of mass it'll it'll aim center of mass it was actually shooting at the dirt 
Okay, so at that range and with cover, you kind of need to be a little bit more discerning on the way that you're aiming. I thought that poke was ill-advised right there. They were already looking there. The looks like the skirta went in there, and we just sort of poke in there and take a couple hits. Being very cognizant and careful and considering when you make pokes is important in this game. Poking around corners where you know people have already shot and are staring is generally not a good idea. And it looks like maybe we didn't like the hit point loss and we're bailing. So I would ask, all right, what's, what's the plan? Like, why are we now driving away from the city where we have all the hit points and is probably the critical terrain? Why are we now running over to the other side? If it is a situation where you've seen that there's no one on that flank, I would not worry about that on this map on encounter. Anybody coming through the 1-2 column is really more or less out of the game, and you've got some TDs back there that will give them trouble as well as the 34B sitting on the corner. So there's really no reason. Right now, put your weight, the weight of your gun in the town and help your concentration of force in town take down their town guys. That, that, that's the main fight, I would imagine, in this battle. Also, I would not, and this is exactly why you just got spotted, probably somebody down this road, but it may be somebody along here on the middle road, you just blaze across the open. Your approach on how you react to the battle, all right? So let's say, all right, we do want to react over to the Northwest. That's, that's what we want to do. The way you get there is important because you want to make sure you don't get hit or spotted or whatever. And here's the T-75 has already showed up. That being said, then, you needed to come up through the north part of here. Is it north? Yes. Through the edge of the map along the road. Avoid crossing this open area at all costs unless you absolutely know there's, know there's no one that can spot. I mean, end game, say you have two guys on the corner here and th that's the only two they have alive, then by all means, blaze across the, the shortest route from A to B is a straight line. But man, avoid open areas like this, like the plague, if you know there's guns out there especially ones that are not spotted and on the, on any map, but in particular this map. So let's see uh, if, if this idea was good anyway. He comes over here and it looks like he's going to add his, his weight in here. What is happening? Oh, we've gone to, we've gone to gold. All right. What I like to do in this situation, and that's a great example of this tank as a medium is kind of painful because it just doesn't have a really fast reload, pretty good alpha but not a fast reload. I've talked about this a couple times with other with other people recently. I would scooch forward until that until that bush goes opaque so I can see no clear so I can see through and see what's going on right here. You do stand a small chance of getting spotted and, we, and so we do with some searching with the with the there we go. And I guess the pantera knows somebody's in there. A little bit ratchety. I'm not really sure what, you know, we auto aim that guy. That worked. That was a great example. Notice how when you auto aimed, it went to center of mass and he was clear enough of terrain that it wasn't a big deal. It worked for you right there. I, I'm starting to sense a bit of a, I'm starting to sense a bit of a uh, trend right here. I'd try to get rid of that E-75 that e TS. The cool thing about this tank is its hold down capability and the turret's not especially strong, but it's got some pretty good angles. And I think if you sneak up right here, you got all that depression with this bad boy, you might be able to sneak some shots right into the E75 TS's lower plate right there. Now you're getting pushed by the 430. And we, wow, okay, excellent. I don't know if that was the side of his turret or what happened there, but that was a great. I saw that, e, I saw that EBR coming in. I think instead of pushing forward and letting them shoot me, I'm going to sit back a little bit here because look at all this help I have back here. There's no reason to go around this corner, which I think we're about to do, and let them have shots when I could hang out behind the building and force them to come around and get, have the TDs have shot. Yeah, we just kind of do this. Yep. And then, oh, geez, this is over. Are we going to reload in time? More than likely not. Ow, ow, ow. All right. So a couple things there. Your initial movement to your position, I liked where you were going to the town. We talked about the approach. You didn't blast across the field, but it wasn't too far. And then we kind of do, we, we go into that center road, we get away with it. That's that's great we got away with it, but I would avoid poking on that road that early in the game. 
anymore, especially that low or that far west on the road. I would stay as far east as I could. Then you bail out after taking some hits. Looks like you're potentially going back to help the flank. I wouldn't have worried about that. I'd have helped clear out the guys that are in the town. You had enough TDs back here to slow them down. Probably would have been fine, more than likely. We get do get some damage. We do cause them to slow down a little bit. But realize that all those guns over there that they brought are really out of the game until they sort of move through and come back towards cap. And you're still messing around with their guys on cap down here. So your gun in the game here in town, I think, is the most important as far as time and winning the game goes. We did decide to come back. Okay, so we decided to come back. Don't blast across the open. Very lucky you didn't lose any hit points right there. And then we talked about positionally fighting in this little area right here. Not a bad job, but I certainly would not have pushed in and let the 430 have a shot. See how he got a shot, but he's not... He hasn't been forced to uncover. Also, you knew the Pantera was holed down. It turned out there was somebody else over there as well, I think. Is there a Pershing there or something? Do we have a Pershing? Or am I just seeing things? I'm just seeing things. Somehow I read Pershing. Anyway, you knew there was a Pantera right there. So just kind of hang out behind this behind this building and force them. If they want to come around the corner and let the Sturves sh get shots at them, fantastic. Let them do it. All right, let's move on to the second one. Second one is proc and a pretty good game. And proc is a great one for looking at how players play and get a good idea of what their basic play style is. So again in the Udez, this time we're bottom tier and a two tier, so not, not too far down. This thing, as I recall, has a pretty good penetration. 217 is decent. We get 253 with gold. All right, not, not amazing. But we do hit pretty hard, right? Is it 360 or 380 or some such thing? 360, there we go. And we're headed over here maybe towards the hill. So let's just fast forward. There we go. Get through the prelim preliminaries. We're going up the hill. It's just us. We have an Emil that may be coming or is sitting on... I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's on the left side of the tracks or sitting on the west side of the tracks, potentially. Skirta T27 moves in. There's their WZ. Progetto sitting there. A bunch of your team camping. And this is Encounter. So it is unfortunate that you have so many guys over the 1-2 line, especially if they camp. The T-49 seems to be making a move, so we're going to come in here and potentially get a nice shot. The Skoda has lost his mind, and we'll close him out. Ooh, not quite a kill. That's a bummer. Low roll. We should have got spotted there. That's amazing. New player, maybe? <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea how he didn't spot you. That's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. All right. Also, be careful with shooting from this bush, getting spotted by somebody who came up here, but that didn't happen. The STA-2 is in an odd position. And we have nobody on the hill. So we're just going to hang out here. Here comes the Emil. Looks like you noticed that. We've got a Renegade and an STA-2 and just a good third of your tank in the southwest corner. <laughs> That's very useful. We'll see what happens with those guys. Did your... Oh, your T-49 died. So your scout did nothing. All right, let's talk about this position. I don't really like this spot right here because trying to back out of this spot, you can get hit 42 million times by the guys in the 5-6 line. For my money, I'm right here. If I get a shot, great. I can still shoot from the right side here, down here where I want to be, where I want to be shooting. You might be looking to potentially double bush here. I don't know if you quite got it. Nope, you can see through it. So if you shoot from here and get seen, you're going to back out. It will still take you a while to get on the corner, but from here, I feel like you're going to get hit a bunch. We take that shot. We immediately back out. I think that's the right idea. You did get spotted. Keep going. Keep backing. Oof. Okay. Uh, that was a little early. Let's talk about that timing. You shot. You got spotted. You didn't go very far down the hill. You certainly weren't covered by the, from the guys in the 5-6 line. Fortunately, nobody was looking or ready or they were busy, but you sat there and then you immediately came back. So that is a recipe for disaster right there. You got spotted. I would get absolutely down this hill and go dark before I telegraph I'm coming back. Because I think you drove back into that bush still spotted. It looks like now you're backing out of it. And we go backwards and now we're headed away. Okay. Nope. We're turning around. Maybe an artillery avoidance maneuver. Not sure. I would definitely not pop here without a bush in front of me. There's no way would I pop right there. 
Go back to the bush. There you go. Back into the right side. There we go. Now we got a shot on this guy potentially. I like it. Aim in. There we go. Looks like you're relying a lot on auto aim. Like I said, again, I don't know what the physical situation is or the, the hand eye stuff or whatever. If that works for you, that's great. Uh, the problem with it is there's no lead fire. Uh, there's multiple problems with it, obviously, but there's no lead fire, so that can affect you. Nice job there. All right, what I would not have done there, I will tell you this for nothing, I would not have stopped up on top of that ridge when you spotted him. I think you were backing up looking for maybe a shot, but the problem is you're highlighted for everybody. There's too many guns left in the game for you to do that. I would have accepted that I spotted him and dove down into this little ditch and just maybe shoot on the run. That's a possibility. Later in the game, when you know there's not a lot of guns, that would have been a great move, potentially, to get a shot. But I, I definitely wouldn't have challenged any of those guys sitting down there on the 5-6 line to have a shot at me. Or somebody who's way back there on, say, the zero column up in there in the northeast. So we kind of moved down into this bush. And we're waiting for somebody to get a shot. All right, so here's, here's an interesting thing, because it is the... It is the difference between the aggressive kind of pushing make it happen player and the more passive let it happen player. The pushing make it happen player is going to be over here trying to light up this these guys, this conqueror and the STA and get some shots and things like that. What you've done is is you're in a great position as far as where you are, but what you're doing in that position is just sitting in a bush. And you, you can't even get a shot on these guys because you don't have the gun depression. So now the arty comes in. They take some hits, and we're just sort of, all right, if they come up and over, by golly, we're going to get our shot. And then and then what? So they come up and over, and you get a shot. You're going to get lit, and then these guys down here are going to start shooting you in the side. So this bush is fine if you have lots of shots. Maybe somebody moves into town and is trying to cap, then great. This bush is fantastic. You can, you can do a lot of shooting right there. But right now, this is, I don't think, really the place to be. Of course, we're going to, nope, we don't have a shot on the Type 4 because he's way over there. And we turn around, and then this is maybe the example. The WZs move around. Now we got the Lurva. That's great. Here we go. So this is a good position if you have that kind of thing. Again, using relying on the auto aim quite a bit. Just take that. Sh Ooh, shoot, shoot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think if you shot slightly earlier, you might have hit either one of those guys. And then we're sort of sitting in the bush. And we're starting to get to the point of the game where we need to start pressing because the collapse is imminent on this team. You have several more guns, a lot more hit points, and pretty good positioning. And then here comes this guy. He's going to let us ooh, we auto aim that guy again. Yeah, we definitely are, are loving the auto aim. All right, get out of there and get up into the pit. you got to get out of that because you're extremely exposed right there. And this conqueror is going to come up and over. And Yeah, we auto aim into the ground right there. Very lucky the Conqueror didn't get a shot on us there. I don't think I'd really challenge the Conqueror and his hold down capability there. Artie's trying to take out the Emil. They know the Emil is the most dangerous thing on this hill right here right now. There he is. Is he looking? I like the patience, and that was a really nice job of picking out the weak side as he turned his turret. It was really nice. And that is something you would do with a tank like this because of all the gun, all the depression. And it's a fairly sneaky little medium tank. As you get into situations, he's going to give you another shot in the same place, isn't he? <laughs> he sure is. Nicely done. Now you can start thinking about sort of pushing into him and killing him if you can get some hit points off the Renegade. If we can strip the Renegade. The only, the only issue with that would be the Type 4 sitting in the back. But I like the continual spotting right here. Think about instead of doing it this way though, potentially kind of coming up just to the right side of this dead tank and trying to light him and then backing out. I will tell you the problem with where you are is you're, you're the highest elevation you can really get and that gives people down here a lot of shots. It also gives people up here a lot of shots. If you're slightly lower, you're going to come up here and get the spot anyway and then you're going to back down and you're going to cover up much quicker. You are going to get a shot on this guy, potentially. I think he's a little higher than that. Oh, no, he's actually up on the hill with you. Sorry. That's the Renegade. I thought that was a Type 4 for a second. 
So get a little more active here and start kind of pushing up behind that bush and see if you can light these guys up. Be cognizant of the type four. Nice little shot on him. This guy didn't even see you. He does now. Oh, okay. So that back section, I don't think is a hitbox. It's got like some kind of container back there. You needed to be a little bit forward on the turret for that shot. We're up to 2,937. Very nice. And I like this. So now, now you're doing it the way I would probably do it right here. I think I would prioritize the Conqueror if I could get rid of that guy. That would be amazing. Although he's a little lower, I might not have shots. Also, you're starting to get guys pushing into the cap right there. See how it's blocked now? Backing off. You don't want to release too much pressure on that hill because they're going to start shooting your guys in the town. And it's the LT that's trying to do it. I like this reaction. Come down here and start beating up on this type. Yeah, there you go. Watch your gun depression. There we go. Using the bush. I like it. Get that shot. Oh, yeah. Prioritize the type, man. Get in there and start working him over. Now we do a little auto aim, but it works. I'm very surprised, actually, based on that angle. I think I'd get there. Get up and over. So this is pretty much over. You've got the only the type and the renegade. And you can lose SA on that quite a bit. I find myself doing that. Quite often, I'll be busy trying to get a shot. I don't notice that mostly everyone's dead. The Renegade's there. He could come up and start causing you problems. But I would just drive up and over this little ridge and start getting the shots, although your gun depression's working for you. Also, you didn't notice it, but your gun's damaged. And I didn't even notice it till now. I don't know how long it's been damaged. Fix that. That's something you want to pretty much fix immediately. Now it's time to just push into the Renegade, start brawling and taking many, as many hit points down as you can. Plus you're going to get the spotting. So don't even don't even do this. There's no reason to be sneaky. Just go at him. All right, look at all the hit points that are left on your team. Who cares if he hits you a couple times? So we're trying to be sneaky. We could already be in there getting shots on him. Looks like we're going to pause on the arty. Yeah, shoot him. Don't worry about the arty. Get a, just go at him. All right, yeah. So instead of being doing that, I would just go out. In fact, you might even consider just ramming him. You might be able to ram, take some damage. If you get him in the corner, you might be able to break the tracks to start getting the assist on him. Now he turns towards you. There we go. And we got the assist anyway. We got a good chunk of assist. There we go. We're going to get a shot on that guy. And I don't know what happened. Did we miss? I guess so. Long reload on this tank. The gun being broken is going to hurt your ability to hit. I think you hit that if you'd have fixed the gun. It looks like you've had your kit ready for a while. I didn't pay attention, as close attention as I should have, as to what your repair status was, but clearly there was a, a time a while ago where you could have fixed your gun, so try to bring that into your cross-check right there. All right, so two games. Kind of kind of interesting there. Uh, on this second one, I like the position. We talked a lot about working in that position, some better ways to do it, some different ways to do it. Realizing mid to late game that it's time to press a little bit, start to break down the guys and, and what they're doing. Uh, a very, very careful in a lot of cases there. Got a lot of good shots off. So nicely done at 3,998. 1,619 on the second one. All right, man. Well, there you go. Quick look at the two of them right there. If I can get the other two, I will. But uh, like I said, I got a lot of guys stacked up right now. But thanks for sending those in for the uh, new submitter, Nacho Tank 33. It's Nacho Tank. Very well or very nicely done on that game, man. Let me know what you think. Everybody else... As always on this channel, if you have other suggestions, keep it civil, point outs, tips, etc., etc., drop them down in the comments. I do appreciate the support of the channel. It's been a fantastic year. That's all I've got for today. See ya.